The Giant Killers aim their arrows at Premier League foes on Wednesday in the final five matches of the League Cup's third round. More League Cup Tuesday Rap Arsenal vs. Doncaster Rovers March 29, 1902, Doncaster beat Arsenal 10. In the century plus since Arsenal has won five and drawn once with Doncaster. Pretty safe to say the informed gunners and their backups will run through the Rovers, though as the old cliche goes, that's why they play the games. Chelsea vs. Nottingham Forest for a long time, this was a Premier League fixture each season. Now Chelsea welcomes the Championship's Forest for the third time since 1999. Everton vs. Sunderland The Toffees could badly use a nice win after its Europa League beatdown in Italy and a series of tough results against Premier League giants. Enter Brian Oviedo, Darren Gibson, Aidan McGeady, Jack Rodwell, and James Vaughan in a Sunderland squad with plenty of experience playing at Goodison Park. The Black Cats have two further players, TYIA's Browning and Brendan Galloway, on loan from Everton. USMNT youngster Lyndon Gooch could get a starting run versus place opposition. Manchester United vs. Burton Albion The visitors surprised United by forcing an FA Cup replay in 2006, and the Red Devils repaid them with a 50 lashing. Burton was in the conference then, and have risen dramatically in the last few seasons and surprised by surviving the championship campaign in 201,617. This one won't be close, but it'll be better than 50 for Nigel Clough's Brewers. West Bromwich Albion vs. Manchester City Tony Pulis has been able to stymie a lot of teams, but Man City ISNT one of them. West Brom boasts 11 straight wins over the Baggies, the last of which have been by multiple goals. West Brom's last draw vs. City was Boxing Day 2011. Its last win September 22, 2010 in the League Cup. Can the Hawthorns be the venue for a surprise follower at Nicolas Mendeler when Jurgen Klopp was hired at Borussia Dortmund in 2008, he did something right away that would set the stage for BVB's run back into Bundesliga power. Klopp brought defender Nevin Sabotic with him from Mainz, and took Mats Hummels on loan from Bayern Munich. The 19-year-old Sabotic played 38 times for BVB that season, and Hummels played well on way to a permanent transfer. More Klopp left fuming at defending largely, Klopp seemed to set it and forget it with his centre-backs from the point forward no big summer buys, and neither Subotic nor Hummels was headed anywhere. That didnt change until 201,314, when Klopp bought Socrates Papastathopoulos from Werder Bremen, adding Matthias Ginter the next season. Klopp left BVB after a disappointing 201,415, taking the job at Liverpool in October 2015. He didnt do much in January, but agreed to terms with Schalke centre-back Joe Matip in February and landed Ragnar Klavan from Augsburg in the summer. The Reds already had bought Dayan Lovren from Southampton in the summer of 2014, and Klopp seemed set. More League Cup Weds Rat Lovren improved a lot with Matip next to him, and Klavan made just 15 appearances for the Reds last season. The Reds went hard at Southampton's Virgil van Dijk, but failed to get to him for any number of reasons. Still, Klopp figured his quartet, including young Joe Gomez in a pinch, would be just fine this season. And maybe they will be, but there are daunting signs for the Reds in the first couple months of the season. Klopp has used Matip in eight matches, tied for the most on the team with Mohamed Salah and Roberto Firmino. HE's used Lovren six times, and Clavin four. Liverpool's record by CB Per Mataplover in 3 W 2 D Matip Cliven 1 W 1 D 1 L Gomez Cliven 1 L Today the centre-backs, Sons Matip and Lovren, especially hurt the Reds in the 20 loss to Leicester on Tuesday. All three moments of Leicester threat in this highlight package find either Clavin or Gomez cooked or out of place. Look, a lot of teams are going to be hurt when using their second-choice CB Per, and many won't be bothered by Liverpool's exit from the League Cup. Furthermore, it's not like anyone has been mistaking Lovren and Matip for Puyol and PK. But look at every English team in Europe, including the ones with far fewer defensive frailties heading into this summer than Liverpool. Chelsea bought Antonio Rudiger. Everton added Michael Keane. Manchester United bought Victor Lindelof. Spurs bought De Vincent Sanchez and Juan Foyth. Arsenal didnt by anyone besides Alexandra Lacazette, while Man City bought full-backs and has received plenty of criticism for failing to add to its centre-back or a Vincent company, John Stones, and Elia Mangala. Liverpool they sold Mamadou Sacco. It's problematic, yes, and it can't be fixed until January.
The question is whether Klopp sees a need to spend in the winter window. As illustrated above, he loves to ride his horses, even if Lovren and Matip aren't quite Hummels and Subotic. Think of what sailed Liverpool in recent seasons, as some of those flops against lesser Premier League teams changed with more rest for their top pair or a better option for the mix follow at Nicolas Mendel and New York Red Bulls and Sporting KC are set to tangle for the 104th Lamar Hunt US Open Cup on Wednesday in Missouri. More League Cup wrap the longtime rivals met more often while Eastern Conference foes SKC now plies its trade in the West, and KC leads the league series 2-1 W2OL13T. Here's everything you need to know about the most prestigious tournament in American soccer, one that earns a spot in the CONCACAF Champions League. Sporting KC is looking to move into a tie with Chicago Fire and Seattle Sounders for the most USOC titles amongst active teams with four. Maccabee Los Angeles and Bethlehem Steel won five but are no longer active clubs. The USL side Bethlehem Steel FC is a new entity. The Red Bulls, meanwhile, enter their second final in search of their first Open Cup. New York, knocked off New York City FC, Philadelphia Union, New England Revolution, and FC Cincinnati to reach the final. KC topped Minnesota United, Houston Dynamo, FC Dallas, and San Jose Earthquakes. The sides met May 3rd at the same venue, with Dom Dwyer scoring twice in a KC victory. KC is 30 in USOC finals, having won in 2002, 2012, and 2015. As for Wednesday, the Red Bulls enter the match without an MLS win since August 12. That five-match span includes four straight ties. KC has two wins and a draw from its last four games. Dwyer's not around for KC anymore, but the firepower remains. Home field advantage will likely tilt the field for KC, but this is the sort of match that begs for a Bradley Wright Phillips moment or two. Well call it for the hosts, but just 21. Follow at Nicolas Mendela using scathing language. The North American Soccer League announced Tuesday its intention to take its problems with the United States Soccer Federation to court. U.S. soccer does not comment on matters of litigation. A Division II soccer league until recently, the NASL accused the USSF of using unjust means and arbitrary rules to prop up Major League Soccer at the expense of the sport in the United States. More Klopp rages at defending Tuesday's press release makes clear that the NASL believes MLS relationship with the USL is detrimental to soccer in the United States and unfair to competitors. It also notes the tricky relationships between U.S. soccer, MLS, and Soccer United marketing. The NASL ISNT trying to win a big financial judgment, it says, rather get its DII status back in the face of what it deems destructive practices from the USSF. From NASL.com the complaint alleges that the USSF has selectively applied and waived its divisional criteria to suppress competition from the NASL, both against MLS and against United Soccer League USL. For example, under the USSF's divisional criteria, there are European clubs that have successfully operated for decades that would be considered ineligible for Division I or even Division II status due to arbitrary requirements like stadium capacity and market size. The complaint alleges that the USSF sought to limit competition from the NASL to MLS and USL, and now seeks to destroy the NASL by arbitrarily revoking the NASL's Division II status for the upcoming 2018 season. The complaint only seeks injunctive relief against the USSF's conduct regarding its divisional designations. NASL Board of Governors Chairman and New York Cosmos owner Rocco Camisso said the USSF had left the league no choice but to file suit. The NASL and fourth-tier NPSL took the bold step of filing a claim against FIFA, CONCACAF, and the USSF with the Court of Arbitration for Sport, asking that the United States be forced to implement a promotion relegation structure. Ricardo Silva, owner of NASL side Miami FC, made waves when the July report showed he presented MLS with a $4 billion TV offer to inject pro-roll into MLS. Follow at Nicolas Mendela Lionel Messi scored four times as Barcelona belted Abar 61 at the Camp Nou on Tuesday. The 30-year-old now has 522 goals for Barca, including nine in five league matches this season. That includes two hat-tricks. More Klopp rages are defending Paulinho and Denis Suarez also scored for Barca, which is yet to lose a point in La Liga play. Messi scored a penalty to start the scoring, then started a combination play before scooting into the 18 to score low and left. Watch the movement from the Argentine magician.
Messi added his second when he drew the defenders and keeper to play him straighten, then used the outside of his boot to flick a deft finish home. Head later dashed to the doorstep to complete the 61 scoreline. And how often do we see this Messi starting and finishing a combination? When you're an elite player who also thirsts for goals every minute on the pitch, you'll score a few. Follow at Nicolas Mendeler.